YouTube! What the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here. Hey, um, so, yes, I've got the results from all the benchmarks and tests and other stuff that I ran. It's not going to be as organized as I would have liked this to have been, because um, for those of you who watched my other videos and you've seen my Warhammer videos, you know I recently lost my campaign save file because when I went through the process of this rebuild, I wiped out my solid state drive thinking there was nothing important on it other than Windows, and I forgot that I had some files on it. And among those files were some screenshots and um, saved test runs and stuff from 3D Mark. But never fear, I've got good stuff to show you here, and I think it will show a good comparison and give you an idea of how and and really what we're comparing here. For those of you, if you haven't watched my previous video with the build using MSI's um, uh, X299 X Power Gaming AC motherboard. Uh, this is a i9 7900X processor, and I'm going to be comparing it to an Intel i7 7700K. And just for fun, I don't have all the benchmarks and stuff, but just right here in CPU Z, we will also compare it to a couple of others just for curiosity's sake. So, before we kick into the results of this, there was a lot of good comments on my last video where I showed the build. My build, pre er, the build that I'm using right now, is not a build that your common gamer is going to want to use. It would only be a build for a gamer who just really wants everything to be top of the line, or it would be a build for someone specifically like me, a content creator. This i9 processor and other um, high core count processors that are out there are really kind of. Um, not intended for gaming per se. The high-end desktop market is probably more geared towards like heavy workloads like editing and rendering and, and all kinds of stuff so um, I, I would say that what's nice about this 7900X and I'll be able to prove to you is that it actually strikes the, the, the perfect compromise. You get almost no loss of gaming when compared to the i7 7700K which is like the king of gaming right now um, you get pretty much no loss there, and you pick up all the extra cores. The only real downside, well, there's two real downsides to this processor, in my opinion, is the first and foremost is the cost, and the second is that they don't solder the integrated heat spreader to the die. It drives me crazy. Ryzen, or AMD does it with all their Ryzen chips. Intel doesn't do it with any of their chips that I'm aware of, not on the consumer side. I don't know about the... Uh, business side with their Xeon processors or something, but it's just irritating. Because the thermal performance on this chip is actually surprisingly good, all things considered. Um, which is weird because i had been reading all the reviews that said how hot it ran, and people with it on a custom loop saying that you couldn't possibly overclock this thing without a custom loop, and that's absolutely not true. I'll prove it to you right here. Um, so it, it's kind of interesting, like the some of the reviews I saw saying this processor runs really hot. So. Let's jump into it and let's talk about some of the uh, different um, uh, aspects of the first of first, first and foremost the MSI X299 uh, X Power Gaming AC. Man, that's a mouthful. We're gonna call it the Gaming AC here for the uh, sake of uh, time. So you saw again. I recommend you go back to the previous build if you want to see more about the motherboard because this one's gonna focus on what's the performance. What is the performance? So if we take a look at the uh, CPU-Z, which I've got right here, um, here's the CPU-Z benchmark results, and I have it comparing to the i7-7700K at stock. I did run these tests with my 7700K, which was running at 4.8 gigahertz, um, but that um, I lost those results, but I pretty much remember where they were at. Um, you can see here on the single core, my processor is scoring a 519.7, whereas the stock 7700K is only a 492. This is no big surprise. I'm running at 4.5 gigahertz, so we can see back over here. Um, and a stock 7700K would be running at 4.2. So yes, we should expect a higher single core performance, and you can see that I'm over double in the multi-thread performance, which is exactly what we'd expect, because once again, you go from four cores and eight threads 
to 10 cores and 20 threads. So everything falls right in the line, right where you would expect it to be in terms of the benchmark. The i7-7700K is the Kaby Lake architecture. Um, the 7900X is a Skylake, Skylake X. I don't know exactly how, I mean, I would assume that the, the I, and this is where I'm gonna go out on a limb here because I don't know all this stuff, but I'm assuming the architecture is similar to Skylake, which was almost exactly the same as Kaby Lake. Uh, in terms of performance, so again, nothing surprising here whatsoever. Um, this is exactly what I expected. Uh, my my 7700K at 4.8 would outperform this processor. I think it scored about a 530 or 530 something in the um, single core, if I remember right, and it gamed a little bit better uh, just because of the extra 300 megahertz, and that was really all there was to it. Because most games still like a fast single core most games just tend to be that way so again this is really meant for people like me content creator and for those of you who are just high-end desktop enthusiast so no I'm not recommending this to your average run-of-the-mill gamer there are better options so for instance let me just show you that real quick if I go down here and we pull up this um, there should be an i5 processor that we can bench against right here 7600 K so if you look at this, you get a 480 single thread performance out of a stock 7600K. You should be able to overclock that thing pretty easy, even on a cheap motherboard, and pretty much match the single core performance that I have right now on a $1,000 chip, but you could do it with a $200 chip and a much cheaper motherboard. And that's why the i5 is a very popular gaming processor. So let's uh, do one other quick comparison just for interest in, uh, interest's sake here. We've got a Ryzen 7 1800X 8 core. Now this Ryzen 7 1800X only runs about, I think it's right around in the $400 neighborhood US and the one I'm using runs about $1000 and the motherboards are cheaper for the Ryzen chip as well um, versus the uh, X299 series and you can see that clearly this X299, I mean pretty much destroys the Ryzen by about 25%. Um, now again, this one's overclocked and the Ryzen isn't, but even if you got a little bit of overclock out of the Ryzen chip, it'd still be losing pretty considerably on the single core. But if you think about this, that's an eight core, 16 thread chip that gets a pretty solid performance um, when you consider the fact that it is $600 cheaper. So if you wanted to do the affordable version of what I'm doing here, like a poor man's high-end desktop, you know, so you want to be a content creator, but you really don't have that kind of money to spend, but you really want the best of both worlds, I would say like a Ryzen 1600X, 1700X, or 1800X would be where you go with that. Um, obviously, if you get down to the 1600X, it's going to drop off even more in the multi-core. Um, but those would kind of be like the poor man's version of what I'm attempting to do here and honestly AMD is delivering a pretty spectacular price for performance um, ratio right now. But that aside, no doubt that what you're seeing here is that as, as of the moment, <laughs> without Threadripper having released yet, this processor is reigning supreme uh, in terms of performance. It's pretty impressive. So um, I do expect that we'll have to review as the new stuff comes out. But anyway, that's the performance from CPU-Z. Uh, what, what did the thermals look like? I had the charts going over here, and um, I lost the max temperatures over here because it's been going for too long now. Um, but basically, two cores maxed out at 74, and the remainder of the cores stayed in about the mid-60s. You can see my idle temperature right now. I have a few things running, so a few of my cores um, are actually heated up a little but the idle temperatures are in the mid to low 30s with this overclock, and that's on a Corsair H100i V2, and Corsair actually sent that um, water cooler with MSI's gear, so this is sponsored by them, and so they sent this, and it is actually doing a really good job. I actually ran this cooler before they sent this one to me already, so I already knew it was a great cooler, and it's easy to use and relatively affordable at about $100 US. Um, I would definitely recommend, though, if you're going to run one of these um, X299 ships, you, you probably need to have a water cooler. Um, and it's very easy to hook up the water cooler with them. The motherboard's ready for it. But that's that was back in the build discussion. So let's keep talking. What does this look like um, in synthetic benchmarks? So I pulled up this, um, this uh, comparison page here to show you uh, what the um, results looked like from the different setups. 
So it's the same graphics card, the same RAM. The only difference is, is when you see the 7900X listed up here at the top, that is with the X299 X Power Gaming AC motherboard, and the other one was with the MSI, um, sorry, uh, Z270 Gaming M7. So that's what was there when you see the 7700K. This is so many numbers that get thrown around. I, this is harder to do than you think. So in any case, if we look at the scores, um, my 7900X build is winning in terms of the top score. It beats out my, this is the overclocked 7700K right here in slot three. And you can see that overall, I beat it out pretty considerably by about 10%. However, there's some interesting things to note. My graphics card was actually running slightly better on the old board, so I'm probably gonna have to throw a 100 megahertz overclock out there. That's probably just a nuance between motherboards. Uh, the CPU score absolutely just crushes from one to the next. Um, but really what it is, is that when you take a look at the combined score, um, typically on this, there's not a big ton of difference, and that's why you're not seeing a massive difference. And it's even closer in, in Fire Strike. Um, so I think what the, the benchmark is coming out and saying is like, absolutely, the 7900X is going to benchmark higher. But I think we all know that the benchmarks don't always mimic the behavior of a game. It is curious to have these benchmarks so that you can actually see the, um, the difference. Uh, but yes, it, it's important to know that sometimes things are different in game. So like I said, I lost my screenshots and stuff, but let's talk Total War performance real quick because a lot of you um, know that I play Total War games and you know Total War games are not usually used as a benchmark, but they can be a pretty solid benchmark game in my opinion just because they use a ton of, um, they use a ton of, uh, what do you call it, the uh, processing power. So let's actually roll in. Um, to Total War Warhammer and we'll run the benchmark battle while I talk through the rest of this So we don't need to update mods because we're not going to use any but Yeah, so the performance in Warhammer. I don't know if it's going to run the same performance while I'm recording it probably won't um, But I ran the performance while not recording and was able to ascertain the performance uh, And it ran uh, at f so let me just show you the settings real quick so this would be my in-game test, and I didn't test this across a ton of different games because I don't think it's necessary. I think you'll pretty much get the picture here that's already being painted. And that picture is um, that as we take a look at this um, particular setup, here it is. I'm running everything on ultra except for the unit size is on large. And we can run the benchmark real quick. Uh, again, I'll just tell you real quick, on my old processor at 4.8 gigahertz, the 7700K was running Warhammer at 123 frames per second at 1440p on these exact same settings with the same graphics card and RAM. When I ran it here, while not recording, I got 117 frames per second on the exact same settings, which is again, probably a product of the fact that this processor is still running 300 megahertz slower than the other but I mean, that is a very comparable performance. So basically not really any significant loss. Yeah, it's definitely gonna run lower frames per second while I'm recording, that is no, no surprise. But still, here I am recording, still running 100 frames per second at 1440p. So not bad at all, not bad at all. Ultra settings while recording over 100 frames per second in the benchmark. So that'll give you an idea uh, and again, when I ran the uh, benchmark on the 7700K, that was not when I was recording. So you can kind of see what the loss is there. Why it's good to have some extra performance whenever you're going to be recording a game, because you're going to take a little bit of a frame rate loss in the process. We can see that one came out at 99. Like I said, it was 117 whenever I was running without the um, recording going. But, I mean, the game looks beautiful. It looks absolutely beautiful, runs really well. I went and ran Attila and Rome 2 to see if there's any major differences there. It's really not. The performance is pretty much comparable, and even with the monster processor like this and a 1080 Ti, Attila still won't run at 60 frames per second on the highest settings. <laughs> it's awful. It really is awful. That game was just terribly optimized. Um, so yeah, in any case, but Warhammer runs well. It really does. It, it runs very well. Let's swap back over to my desktop. So I'll cut back over, but yeah. So that's pretty much the um, summary of what I've learned. I, I know some of you might want to see even more extensive testing. Uh, I did run some um, video renders, and as expected, my video render time was cut in half. So the video rendering is fantastic. 
on this um, on this uh, new processor. I did notice that um, not all my cores run at 100% like they did whenever I had the 7700K uh, when rendering. They were all running at like 40 some odd percent. I don't know if my software just can't take advantage of them fully or if it just has, I, I don't know. I don't know exactly what that was about, but again, thermals are good. The H100i V2 is a fantastic cooler for this processor. It's doing a really good job, and I really appreciate Corsair pitching that in. And MSI's motherboard makes this whole process stupid easy. So some of you might be wondering, Air, how did you overclock this? Well, MSI has a built-in overclock profile, and I, I don't, I'm not good at overclocking manually. So I went and turned on their automatic overclocking pro, uh, profile and set it to the 4.4 gigahertz setting. It was running pretty hot. It got into the 90s. Um, all I did was take that exact same profile that they had set up and I went in and I changed the voltage down from like 1.25 volts on the core down to 1.15 because I had seen a website say that they were able to run at that voltage on this. and. That's how I got the performance I got here. So the nice thing is, is for a newbie overclocker like myself who just doesn't know all those settings, you can use Intel's built-in, and if it doesn't give you exactly what you want, at least you have that starting point like I just did there, and I just clocked down a little bit. And so I have to give MSI some some real credit there because their, their overclocking profiles are great. It really helps people like myself who want to overclock and want to be into this, but just don't have the time to learn all the little nuances that go into such things. So very, very appreciative for MSI providing the board. This is really gonna make a big difference in my um, ability to crank out content more efficiently, faster. This processor actually runs cooler than my last processor, even though it's got 10 cores. Uh, I, am, I am blown away by this setup. The only downside, like I said, that I can really throw about this setup is that it's extremely expensive. So I guess there's a price to pay for having everything. <laughs> when you have your cake and you eat it too, you pay a high price. Obviously I didn't have to pay that price here because it was sponsored to me by MSI and thank you very much MSI, this is incredible. Um, but yes, it is very expensive. But you will get solid performance out of it, incredible performance. So Intel delivers. There has been a lot of trash talking about the X299 platform and I will say this, I don't like the idea of the KB Lake X chips but these Skylake X chips are legit. They are not cheap. The X299 motherboards that I've seen from MSI are amazing, and this one I'm using is no exception to that. Very good motherboards with extremely good features. Um, I think the only real question here is the price to performance ratio, but when it comes to are you gonna get amazing performance, yes, yes you will down this road. So that's kind of my end thoughts on it. What do you think? What did you think of the results? Was there anything here that surprised you? The biggest thing that surprised me was the heat. And again, curious to hear your thoughts. And I uh, look forward to reading your comments. Thank you again to MSI. Thank you to Corsair. And I really look forward to bringing you more content. Air of Carthage, signing out for now. I'll be back with Warhammer content tomorrow. And hopefully some news updates on the new upcoming Norska DLC. Air of Carthage, signing out. I'll see you there.